good evening and welcome and this disclaimer that is the image displayed during this medical training session they are for educational purpose only all right so welcome to session 27 and for the female reproductive system right we have divided it into two parts so today we'll be discussing ovaries and uh, fallopian tubes and tomorrow there will be discussion on say uterus and the vagina all right so let's start and yes i got few emails uh for the question which i asked and it is it is like for the first one it was like many of you have agreed that it would be fine if i record few of the sessions because that would be like saving the time of yours and mine both so it is like at my convenience i'll just prepare few of the films and i'll keep keep uh, uploading them and at the same time you can watch them at your convenience however for abdomen will not be doing it right all the abdomen sessions they will be live for head and neck i'm thinking of preparing few films in advance but let's see how the whole flow starts or continues or what we can do is we can prepare few of the films for physiology right and anatomy is something which we keep on running the way we are doing right now second it was it was this this suggestion was nice that in case if i write down all the text beforehand so i was told that no it would kill the charm and at the most how much time would it save so i actually tried it that how much time it is so it it would be a matter of about 10 to 15 minutes because we are not writing everything we are just writing the keywords right so it would save just 10 to 15 minutes max but actually it would kill the whole charm so that's why i'm going back to our old, same system right so in today's session nothing is pre-written everything will be writing uh live right so that were like two updates so let's start with our today's topic okay right so here we shall be talking about the internal genital organs female right now out of that it's like ovaries that is what we shall be covering today and the fallopian tubes which is also called as the uterine tubes right so that would be covered today the uterus and the vagina that would go for session number two that is tomorrow fine because every every organ is so important so that's why it would won't be uh, a good justification if we try to finish off the things a bit faster okay. so here is like ovaries the way in case of males it's like say testes that way it's like ovaries in case of female yeah that's that's what i also felt okay so see here is the ovary right So don't worry about that medial surface but basically that's the ovary right this is you have to orient yourself because rest of the structure and rest of the explanation they are very easy there are only few things which you have to remember once you will remember the arteries nerve supply blood supply everything is absolutely easy so that thing would go really fast this is you orient yourself that this is anterior right very obvious because posteriorly we are watching sacrum so that's posterior okay so first thing first 
what exactly are we getting interiorly and that is well discussed this portion right and what's that that is obliterated umbilical artery and we know that obliterated umbilical artery is giving that medial correct medial umbilical or umbilicus ligament and then the peritoneal fold on it so peritoneal reflection on it that would be called as the medial medial umbilical fold right so this is the first thing which we'll be watching anteriorly so this is first just behind it's the ureter right so this is first which is anterior and ureter that is posterior right along with this internal iliac artery because this is a schematic figure but actually it goes like this so it will be coming into its posterior part right so this is this fossa this fossa this place right that is what is called as the ovarian fossa it is called as the ovarian fossa and it definitely makes sense to remember that medial umbilical ligament right because it was anteriorly right so that is good right this is good and ureter and internal iliac they are posterior okay anteriorly we are getting one more thing and that is external iliac right that is external iliac artery that is also anteriorly that's it so regarding this obturator now or or some other structures we are not touching right now yes let it come as it progresses okay now this is the position of ovary there is only one thing which we need to see in this right that how the ovaries they are positioned that's the position now in case of nullipara right a female who has not not a single delivery so in that case not a single pregnancy now in that case see what happens the uterus is in its normal shape so uterine tubes they are also like that and ovary is in its original position so this position is like a vertical position vertical position so that's the reason there is upper pole and there is lower pole right because that's the position of the ovary so there will be upper pole and the lower pole now in case of multipara when there is one or more deliveries right what really happens is that uterus expands and then it pulls it pulls the ovary so that's the reason the shape the direction of the ovary changes right so now it is more or less horizontal it's horizontal so that's the major difference and now you'll be telling that okay its end is like that lower pole right lower pole which was over here right this lower pole now it has become the median pole medial pole right so that's a minor thing which we just need to know okay regarding the external feature right regarding the external feature this is where the changes really start now in all those girls right before the onset of ovulation right now we hope you know this ovulation that is the release of that secondary oocyte right when that ovum is released that is that process is called as the ovulation so before the ovulation start that is before the menstrual cycle starts the in the external feature the ovary is smooth right ovaries they are smooth and and they are like 
grayish pink color right this is in case of those young girls in which still ovulation has not started but after puberty right when the cycles have started the surface starts becoming uneven right surface becomes uneven now why should it become uneven so during you know that during the menstrual cycle right there would be formation of corpus luteum then it goes into the form of say when it becomes non functional it becomes like corpus albicans right and these are like scars this is like a scar right this is white color albicans albicans means white color luteum is yellow color right so all of them and then it ruptures it leads to the release of that oocyte so that's why not only the surface becomes uneven and it becomes gray in color right it becomes gray in color we'll see right in case uh, the concept of just again i'm asking a question is the concept of the entire hormonal system right corpus luteum corpus albicans what really happens in pre ovulatory phase post ovulatory phase which are the dominant hormones is is that entire process clear if not just let me know right because today's topic is relatively bit short so we can definitely include that entire process because it is like a very well orchestrated process that is how the ovaries and how the uterus they will play their role in absolute synchronization and then from hypothalamus right it is the higher centers they are they are handling the entire show so if if this menstrual cycle entire concept is clear then then no worries right we can continue with our topic just let me know type at your ease right and if needed so i'll i'll incorporate if not no problems okay so over here see when we talk about ovaries see when we talk about ovaries we need to know one thing that how exactly right those peritoneal reflections are there i'm drawing something just for the ease right let's say this is this is uterus that's the fallopian tube right the fimbrial end and we'll be discussing the fallopian tube in more detail all the parts intramural this that everything right and these are the ovaries we have seen the broad ligament of uterus right that was the here it was here broad ligament of uterus <laughs> well then it depends upon you if you if you want to go early so then i can finish early so say that's the broad ligament of uh uterus now in this broad ligament of uterus right there are layers so think of that there is anterior layer and there is a posterior layer right so these layers these layers that anterior layer would come over here right and then from here it gets reflected it gets reflected so it is this anterior border it is this anterior border which is devoid which is devoid of peritoneum right there is no peritoneum so as such what we okay i i'll revise that we'll go for that so ovaries so ovaries they are as such entirely covered right fully covered entirely covered by peritoneum but in the anterior portion so that's except one 
that is the anterior border right this is where it is not covered and this anterior border it is also called as the mesovarian so mesentery of ovary is mes ovarian mesovarian border correct so that is one rest all easy obliterated umbilical artery mesovarium right it is this mesovarium and which is consisting of ovarian arteries and ovarian veins so this consists of ovarian vessels fine right that's what it is and this is the ovary parietal peritoneum lining the ovarian fossa remember the ovarian fossa right that the ovarian fossa which we saw just before few minutes and the posterior border so over here it is this anterior border and over here that's the posterior border right that's the posterior border and we saw this right over here see the behind on the posterior side there is there is ureter there is obturator artery right and over here see here right there is ureter those internal iliac vessels right they are on the posterior aspect and the aspect yes our our favorite right obliterated umbilical artery correct so that's how things are arranged now there is one important structure so that's the ovary just underneath over here there would be one structure like this right and there would be one more structure which would be like this both are ligaments this is what is called as the suspensory ligament suspensory ligament of ovary well this is just ligament of ovary ligament of ovary this suspensory ligament right because this region would be called as the infundibulum right infundibulum so that's why it is also called as the infundibulo pelvic ligament right in fundibulo pelvic ligament more as as we see those structures thank you so let's see this now it would be very clear see that's the seedha sada simple ligament of ovary right and this one is special suspensory ligament of ovary right so that's how they are right they are and one important point over here is that this is the site of a very nice anastomosis right uterine artery it comes over here and over here this is the ovarian artery this ovarian artery will be traveling into the suspensory ligament of ovary and then they meet over here right so that's the ovarian artery and the uterine artery they both meet at this point now see these are the parts the first one these are the parts of fallopian tubes right so this is intramural part intramural means something this part which is inside which is inside the uterus so that is called as the intramural part then this the second one it is called as the isthmus no worries the, as such this topic would be repeated today only when we'll be talking specifically about the fallopian tubes right but this is just to give you the reference so this is isthmus then comes the ampulla usually the fertilization occurs over here right so it is this area which where there would be in case if the sperm comes right 
So that would be the place the rendezvous point would be over here, right? That is the ampulla. This is infundibulum and then comes the fimbrial end that is the finger-like projection. So this is what is called as the fimbrial end and that's the final part. Right. Okay, we were interested in this ligament of ovary and the suspensory ligament of ovary. So these are the two ligaments. Now this ligament of ovary, right? This ligament of ovary. So it is going towards the uterus, but from there, when we'll be discussing tomorrow, it will be still more clear. Just at this point of time, we understand one thing that this particular ligament will be in continuation as round ligament of uterus because in uterus there will be several ligaments. So this would be in continuation with round ligament of uterus. So tomorrow when we'll be learning reflections on, on uterus, at that point we'll say that this is like a round ligament of uterus which will be continuing with ligament of ovary. Right, so that's that's the point which we must remember. Okay. Now for the visceral relation, the easiest part, right, for the visceral relations. In fact, we have seen everything all the part because all those images they were more than enough so for the upper pole for the upper pole what is the range there would be see see the upper pole so obviously the uterine tube would come right uterine tube so this is one second external iliac vessels so that would come right and this upper pole is connected to that ovarian fimbria and the suspensory ligament of ovary right that's what we that's what we saw right so this is this is like an upper end right that's the upper end so that upper end is attached to attached to that suspensory ligament correct suspensory ligament obviously of ovary then what about the lower pole well it makes things much easier straight away we would first write that if there is suspensory ligament on the upper pole so that means over here there is ligament of ovary that sida sada ligament of ovary no other name right well the thing is uh, in abdomen this portion is quite difficult well actually not actually not right it's just like we we need to understand it once or twice and then things will fall into its place so why that? That is not very difficult. And and second thing, why why the ligament? Ligament is I means this is what I guess. Ligament means relatively thick structure. So over here, when in abdomen and pelvis, when everything is so soft, so even those those peritoneal folds, right? They are slightly or those th fascias which are slightly thickened, so they get the advantage and they start behaving like a boss. And when in body. Say so they say that whosoever is thickened, so right, let's call them ligament. So when it comes to real joints, so yes, ligaments, they are so powerful, so tough, right? But over here in abdomen, everything is so delicate. So even those thickened fascias, they behave like a boss. So that must be the reason of telling ligament. And see, as such, it is good, right? We, as a medico, now we have to remember one termin one less terminology. Otherwise, if, if they could, would have named it something so crazy, so then you might be remembering one extra terminology, right? So thanks to whosoever has said ligament to them. So it's good, na? right? We have to remember one terminology less. 
Okay, so this is ligament of ovary and in between, right, in between this contains, this is in between two layers of broad ligament of uterus. So, broad ligament of uterus, when we'll see that from uterus, it is like a complete sheet. So, this ligament of ovary is inside. So, this ligament of ovary is in between, is in between two layers of broad ligament. The name itself is broad ligament and it actually is broad, right? Broad ligament of uterus. Yeah, of uterus. Okay. Now only the lower pole, right? Say that's the ovary. Those tubes, they will be coming like this and then there are the fimbrial ends and it goes like this, right? It goes like this. So if you really see the lower end, right? That's the lower end. This one would be the lower end, right? So that's the lower end. And and when when you tilt it like this so then where would be the lateral surface this would be like a lateral surface true because originally to this it was like this now very so this was the upper pole this was lower pole right then say this is the lateral surface this one would be the medial surface but now because of that pull that's this that position has changed so this one is the lateral surface it is only lower end and the lateral surface they are not related to uterine not related to uterine tube so just keep this thing in on uterine tubes they are not related right otherwise it is almost related now see we said about that ovarian fossa right ovarian fossa so in that ovarian fossa what was there in anteriorly yes it was that obliterated umbilical artery right that was anterior then what was posterior posteriorly we saw that there was ureter correct and the internal iliac arteries and veins so that was there what was superiorly the superiorly it was external iliac artery and veins right and what was inferiorly that is where the obturator now artery and veins that is ovarian fossa right this is the ovarian fossa so as such these are the structures the ovary is surrounded by so many important structures so this would be like just one thing you remember and that will cover almost the entire concept now starts the arterial supply and in arterial supply it is divided into two parts right this would be exactly the same even for the uterine tubes but the roles would change over here the name is ovarian artery and this ovarian artery i think you you do remember it right because it is that long traveler right Tra the traveler who is covered a long distance so this is like a long distance traveler all the way this ovarian artery right it, it was emerging from it was emerging from abdominal aorta right the branch of abdominal aorta we used to tell every time that this is the gonadal artery in case of male it is testicular artery in case of female it is ovarian artery now here comes that ovarian artery all the way it it emerged just below the renal artery so high right so just below just below renal artery and then traveling all the way and finally reaching to its destination then what happens this ovarian artery we just talked about it enters into suspensory ligament of ovary right so it enters into that suspensory ligament suspensory 
ligament of ovary and then what it really does right here is suspensory ligament and then it tells to uterine artery that let's meet so it is the uterine artery over here so it makes our entire understanding much easier because this uterine artery will also be going over there and there would be the anastomosis right there would be anastomosis either way this uterine artery right it is branch of internal iliac in fact to be very specific right this is internal iliac internal iliac divides into anterior and posterior trunk right and this is the branch of anterior trunk right so that's how say they anastomose now in case of ovary right we are talking about ovaries ovarian artery is the main supply when we'll talk about say uterine tubes everything will remain same except uterine artery will take over that would be the main supply and ovarian will be supplying only a small portion <laughs> same way it is the venous drainage which you have to remember or understand only once and then it would be utilized almost everywhere say surrounding the ovaries right from the ovaries there is a plexus and it is called as the pempiniform plexus it's literally it's literally a group cluster of all those vessels right all those veins they are coming then they meet 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 they create that entire joint right and then from there right two veins then those two veins they merge and then finally only one vein comes out right and this is very correctly said ovarian vein right what else we can give that name so ovarian vein and yes it would occur on both the sides right so it is a paired structure so on right side on right side this ovarian vein would drain into inferior vena cava and on the left side on the left side it would drain into left renal vein right it would drain into left renal vein so that's it this is this is like now because of this plexus it is richly supplied right? so that's how it goes okay about the lymphatic plexus or the lymphatics everything right so ovaries then uterus though in uterus only the fundal part but at least for this uterine tubes right we'll write just fundus fundus uterus all of them they drain into all those who are nearest to it so that is in aortic nodes there were lateral aortic and para aortic correct aortic nodes so all of them they would drain to that that's the reason whenever you will be doing ultrasound in case if there is any carcinoma right of say ovary uterus anything you will find on ultrasound or on ct scan aortic lymphadenopathy that would be very common right aortic lymphadenopathy in case of say any of the pathologies associated with ovaries so let's say i, I just write carcinoma of ovary or uterus right so that's it so the keyword is aortic lymphadenopathy now regarding the nerve supply in nerve supply i got just one meal 
where where this question was asked so that's why i'll be explaining it in slightly more detail and and it's absolutely fine to ask about means means you were you were so decent in asking that i'm asking a stupid question none of the question is stupid friend any time you can ask any question none of the question is stupid so it is completely fine to ask that question that what exactly is a motor to vessel that's okay right there is no problem so here it is for the nerve supply again there is a formation of plexus right and that plexus is called as the ovarian plexus plexus means group right a collection where every so in this ovarian plexus who will be contributing renal aortic hypogastric all of them right all of them all these are plexuses all of them they are contributing into the ovarian plexus right now what this ovarian plexus is it would be having both the types of systems it would be having sympathetic sympathetic and it would be having parasympathetic now listen very carefully right yesterday also we 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 use these terms now sympathetic in ovarian plexus the sympathetic will be having afferent and efferent fibers right afferent means they are coming they wo aa rahe hain right efferent means they are ja rahe hain that is exit and that's how i used to remember so efferent mean exit exit with reference to brain so that means whosoever is coming to brain right brain is sitting and if those nerves are coming so those nerves will be carrying what they will be carrying sensations so remember whenever you are dealing with afferent that means it is for pain correct that means it is for pain for efferent right it means those fibers they are going when they are going so they will be carrying few commands whatever the commands but they will be carrying those commands from brain to that specific organ right so when we say that these are the efferent fibers and they are vaso motor right they are vaso motor what vaso motor is vaso means vessels correct that's what you even ask for right vessels blood vessels now these blood vessels they are having smooth muscles right that means they are not under our control correct when they are motor when they are motor remember when they are motor it means brain would say ki come on boss contract the the moment that message comes via this particular fibers vessels would say we don't have to think anything brain has said contract that means those muscles will contract when those muscles will contract what it will do will it increase the bore of the of the vessel or it would decrease obviously decrease because those muscles they are circular muscles right those muscles are circular muscles so when they would contract it will lead to vasoconstriction right it would lead to vasoconstriction that is constriction of blood vessels fair enough right this is t10 and t11 what about parasympathetic or parasympathetic is sacral right so s2 s3 and they will be doing exactly ulta of sympathetic so they are what they are vaso dilator they are vaso dilator Right. Okay, just missed. S two, S three, S four. So they are vasodilator. That's how things go. So whenever in physiology, I think I think there is a film. You you just go through that film, in which I have explained in detail about all the receptors. And that's where those muscles they are they are like they don't have any problem. 
they don't understand any any physiology they just understand what brain is telling brain is telling contract fine they will contract brain is telling okay relax so they will relax right so that's how all these systems go to be more specific it depends upon those receptors right all right so here it is this is the nerve supply okay see constriction and contraction when when we are dealing with say this is these are the blood vessels right i am i am using one statement because of the contraction of smooth muscles of blood vessels blood vessels constrict got the idea that see this is the blood vessel and these are the smooth muscles these smooth muscles when they contract when they contract these are circularly arranged right when they contract so they contract and they lead to constriction constriction means narrowing right constriction means narrowing narrowing so they just narrow the entire bore right contraction means muscles they contract right they decrease in its length right so that is the contraction and the constriction so over here when we talk about the functions right when we talk about the functions of ovaries one function is production of that oocyte right production of oocyte this is fine but when that process of ovulation right that process of ovulation occurs that process that is when there is liberation of this oocyte when this oocyte is released right when this oocyte is released from the ovary that process itself is called as the ovulation right and in this which means every month right every 28 days depending upon the length of the cycle that is released so there is release of one secondary oocyte per cycle and that process keeps on continuing now this phase right this phase is important from many of the aspects say this menstrual cycle it is a game of estrogen and progesterone right estrogen and progesterone in that hope that yes this time to there would be definitely fertilization right estrogen and progesterone right they work on on like a military mode but then after 16 17 day now when they find you know there is no fertilization and then there is no scope of fertilization entire construction it starts breaking right so that's like a very orchestrated thing between estrogen and progesterone now this is okay but see in case of females this estrogen is a very powerful sex hormone estrogen is fine it it is it here will be studying that okay it will be helping in release of rest of the hormones making changes in, in into the uterus right all those vessels would be developed but it has got tremendous impact on on the on the psychology of the female this is the reason that why every male should know very well about the menstrual cycle every male right so that they know their female well because they'll be say during this phase she would be very happy obviously in the later stage of the cycle when there will be decreased estrogen there will be decreased progesterone and then that uterus which was prepared right now that uterus starts breaking lack of estrogen lack of progesterone that means there will be lack of luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone that would lead to breakage of all those blood vessels right that's where there would be even the mood changes so when we'll be discussing on that saturday right on this saturday in fact this saturday right this is a vital phase 
In case of males, yes, there are waves of testosterone, but usually those waves, they are not that prominent. So that's why that mood remains almost similar with minor changes up and down. But in case of females, there would be big mood swings. Yes, it matters a lot. Especially as the age increases, there will be major changes. Right. So that's the reason it is so important to understand this entire hormonal system. I think let's let's discuss it as such we talked about it. Right? See some fundamental things. We divide it like this. Right? This is day one of menstrual cycle. So that's where the menstruation starts. That means the bleeding starts. So first day of bleeding that is day one right and the entire cycle it is divided into two parts that is two phases the first phase it is called as the follicular phase follicular phase and second is called as the luteal phase now what are these phases why such names right see in simple words when we say menstrual cycle it is not only it is not only that the ovaries are playing their games. It is also the uterus is equally involved. So they both play their roles in, in superb harmony. So then there are few changes which are occurring in ovaries. And then with synchronization, even the uterus is also working. Right. So first we'll see from the point of view of ovaries. Right, right now, we'll not be touching uterus much. First, let's understand the ovaries. So, over here, the entire cycle, we said it is divided into follicular and luteal phase. Yes, we'll add a word to that. This is ovarian follicular phase and the ovarian luteal phase. You'll understand it's why these names just in a minute. So, here it is this cycle starts as we said this cycle is is starting from day one of the menstruation that is the bleeding so day one to day five roughly day four day five right it is that phase nothing what really is happening over here right we'll come to that that is the point when there is least estrogen least progesterone lack of follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone and then it occurs we'll we'll talk about it so first thing first, this ovarian follicular phase, right, this is variable. This is variable. So think it like that whenever there is some mission, the first thing is planning, right? Because the plan is that over here, the ovulation should occur ovulation should occur so ovulation is what that that oocyte should be released right A release of oocyte so because when that oocyte when that this ovum is released then and then it can be fertilized right so if it is fertilized fine things will go towards pregnancy if it is not fertilized well go back to that original system and keep on repeating the cycle so it means this preparation part is variable but this second part, it is relatively fixed. It is relatively fixed. So you'll find that this is 14 days. It is precisely 14 days. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that ovulation occurs exactly 14 days before the next cycle. You got the idea? See, because when things will go from here to here right these are 14 days so after 14 days the next cycle would start correct next cycle would start so this is fixed this is fixed what is its importance we'll see that but these are the facts which you need to understand now very right from the ovaries point of view this is pre ovulatory correct and this is post ovulatory nothing big right this is easy 
pre-ovulatory and the post-ovulatory phase. Fair enough? So far, so good. But then, think of that in both these cases, over here, it is the estrogen which would be the dominant hormone. While in the second case, it would be the progesterone who will be the who will be playing the leading role. Now, how this thing really happens, right? And it is the estrogen which will be affecting, which will be telling even the even the uterus that yes, chances are high that this ovum which I am preparing might get fertilized. You be prepared for the fertilization, and and that's how the uterus also starts working, right? So it means from the uterus point of view, from the ovaries point of view, we said pre-ovulatory and the post-ovulatory. But from the uterus point of view, we need to change the terms, right? From the uterus point of view, day 1 to day 14, that is the first part, it is called as the proliferative part, right? Or the proliferative phase. So, this, this estrogen tells that, see, I am preparing that oocyte. When he is released, you prepare yourself. So, this uterus would say, because it is not just overnight process, right? You need to give me some time. So, that's where the proliferation starts. Proliferation, right? So, that endometrium. So, if this is the, this is the uterus, that inner lining, it is called as the endometrium, right? There is a basal layer. On basal layer, which acts as a base layer, on that there is endometrium. That endometrium starts thickening. Uh, under there are blood vessels, endometrial vessels. They also start becoming bigger and then they become coiled, right? So that they are trying to accumulate more and more blood and nutrition just to prepare the environment that in case if that womb is fertilized, so we need to give a good space for the fertilization. So over here, 1 to 14, it's a proliferative phase. 15 to 28, right, when the cycle is of 28 days, this is what is called as the secretory phase. Secretory phase. So, secretory phase, which is in coordination with post-ovulatory and the proliferative phase, which is with pre-ovulatory phase, right. Now, we see that how those higher centers, they are working. See, Big boss is always hypothalamus, right? So that is the hypothalamus. And this hypothalamus is giving all instructions to, to pituitary, right? Pituitary. And in this case, it is the anterior pituitary, right? Because posterior pituitary, it is to send any signal to him, there are nerves, but, but over here it is the direct connection from hypothalamus to, to the anterior pituitary. Now this hypothalamus is, let's change color, what hypothalamus is doing, it is releasing that gonadotropic leaning, releasing hormone, right, GnRH, right, so it is like gonadotropic, gonadotropic. releasing hormone, right, H4 hormone. This GnRH will act on anterior pituitary. In anterior pituitary would release what? FSH and LH. What FSH is? Follicle stimulating hormone, right? Name, see, see such specific names. Follicle, right, this means stimulating hormone. Right, and this is luteinizing hormone. Right, luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing is a process. Right, we'll just see that. Now, see before puberty, is hypothalamus doing thalamus doing anything? Yes, hypothalamus is just practicing. Right, constantly. Right, a, a minor fluctuation. So of this GnRH is getting released. So it is low level, 
low level but steady but steady right this is before menarche that is the first onset of menstrual cycle or or the before puberty right to keep it in simple words after puberty it goes into the form of spikes right it increases decreases increases decreases now with that whenever there is any change in that these follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone they are released now they are released in large quantity and in fact they trigger they are triggered their effect is straight away on to the on to the ovary in ovaries say this is that follicle right so there are two types of cells right say this this is the largest cell of the human body right so this is just a primary oocyte right not matured just a primary oocyte but it is surrounded by two types of cells one is called as the theca and second is called as the granulosa right so all those over here they are granulosa right they are granulosa so here they are the granulosa and this one they are theca 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 are out right because they are thick so they are out now these theca cells over here so that's the luteinizing hormone right that luteinizing hormone would act on theca cells and that follicle stimulating hormone will act on just a minute on granulosa with response to that theca would release androstenone in dion right and draw stain and dion i always remembered it because as such it's a single word but i remembered it like breaking it into three parts and draw stain and dion so so when when you speak right you speak with sharafat that it is andro stain and dion one word but as such this is how you can remember and i'm sure within few minutes right tanu is going to come up with something which is easy to remember it okay now this granulosa this granulosa will release aromatase right and it would act on endosteroidion and it will lead to very famous 17 beta estradiol and what this 17 beta estradiol is it is nothing but simple language estrogen right estrogen so see this is what is happening into the first phase right now this estrogen is so powerful right it is a superb mood elevator right it is a superb mood elevator and that is what really happens that is after certain age when they say that we should go, go for hrt hormone replacement therapy because lack of estrogen means it would affect the beauty it would affect almost all the organs skin uh, even the metabolism right everything is affected एंड्रयू सुने दो ओके याद है नो कीप ऑन थिंकिंग कीप ऑन थिंकिंग बट बट पे अटेंशन ऑल्सो सो दिस दिस इस्ट्रोजन राइट दिस इस्ट्रोजन लेवल स्टार्ट राइजिंग नाउ जस्ट बिफोर वन और टू डेज सो वी गो बैक टू दैट फिगर in fact there are some receptors involved right there are there are few more complex processes but but then for next one hour we'll be discussing this only so so 
just in nutshell what i'm telling is this it is this phase it is this phase when this there is high surge of this estrogen and it is this phase boys all the boys right your your female would be very happy because it is the level when the estrogen level would start shooting right and it is in this high surge right literally it is like high surge one or two days before ovulation before ovulation now when that thing happens it would trigger lh and fsh in huge doses right there is huge surge of lh and fsh why because it would be affecting it would be telling hypothalamus so hypothalamus would release this gonadotropic releasing hormone in the process in the response lh and fsh right they they'll be released now see that's where the trigger starts what happens to uterus right because this is like now affecting everyone so uterus now realizes so much of fsh so much of lh and fsh right so first endometrium right endometrium that is thickened then all those endometrial glands right they will start developing then all those spiral arteries right spiral arteries endometrial arteries right they start becoming coiled so in other words it is accumulating and it is preparing the environment not only that right say so this is the uterus the lower portion right that is what is called as the cervix and then comes the vagina so it is the cervix right which tells that it is necessary to make that sperm happy right because sperm sperms would be coming so now those sperms they should be happy so it will start releasing mucus so that the entrance for all these say sperms right they they it is facilitated so the idea is create the atmosphere right create the environment which is suitable for fertilization right and this process is from 11th to 15th day right when we are talking about 28 days cycle what really is happening to that uh, ovaries right ovaries would say how can you forget me right in response to such high surge right that oocyte which was here right it is released now the oocyte is released and when it is released those fimbrial ends right those fimbrial ends of fallopian tube they'll catch him and by the ciliary movement right he'll start his journey all the way all the way towards the towards the uterus now in case if there is sperm right in case if there is sperm so that sperm would be meeting over here so this is like that's the region right where there are all the chances that they both would meet so that's that's why it is said that see millions and millions of sperms are there right whenever you at any time if you if you go in any sort of depression right when you feel that no i can't do this or i can't do that i can't learn this thing i always say that see there were millions and millions and millions of sperms correct out of that one sperm it succeeded 
there were so many ohms out of that the best the most prominent the most dominant ohm right it started its journey when they both met that means best from both the sides best of the sperm and the best of the ohm and that's how you were created when right from the beginning you were best so then why to go in any sort of depression right right from the beginning right from the first second right you were the best and then and then the entire process started true so as such means it's not just for telling but you are the best so that's how things go okay so now what happens to this follicle this follicles now he'll say okay, now to so there is i have released the oocyte right so i'll now help in the entire process so it is yellow color so he is called as the corpus luteum corpus luteum right this is after ovulation so that's why after ovulation the second phase is called as the luteal phase this is the reason because he is called as the corpus luteum luteum means yellow right it is yellow the cause of extremely painful cramps on the first day okay okay uh because question is there so let's finish this and i'll answer this right because it is it is a very specific answer so first we'll finish this entire process and then i'll talk about it so this is corpus luteum now this corpus luteum right he there are theca cells it has got theca cells it has got granulosa cells theek hai so they both will say that well theca cells they will say they will release that androstenedione and granulosa will say i'll release aromatase so here it is androstenedione is released this will say aromatase from my side and then act on it and release 17 beta estradiol right that is what is estrogen is 17 beta estradiol so that is estrogen now this is just the beginning of the cycle right now that progesterone is getting jealous that that now it is my area right so he starts something extra those granulosa cells they'll increase right there is a new change they'll increase the activity of what's called as the p450 and these are very specific they are called as scc scc means side chain cleavage enzyme in fact they are cholesterol right so it is cholesterol and that changes into progesterone progesterone so just for the side scc means side chain cleavage enzyme in fact this name itself is explaining the property of this particular enzyme okay so from cholesterol now the progesterone the moment progesterone comes so he says okay, now this is my ilaka right so first he'll go and will tell that come on pituitary now this is too much right so enough is enough inhibiting it so when it inhibits so pituitary will say okay fine forget i will not release fsh i will not release luteinizing hormone right at the same time this granulosa would say that even i can help directly it will release something right it is what is called as the inhibin right inhibitor name itself is so negative right will say pituitary stop working complete dadagiri and now the progesterone is happy right and now i am the main boss and then progesterone tells that estrogen was not not that effective now see what i do to endometrium right so he goes for that now the endometrial thickness rises 
right heavily and those arteries they become absolutely coiled and spiral right so coiled spiral arteries they increase in number increase in magnitude right making the area rich and at the same time the mucus secretion starts mucus secretion that also becomes very prominent so this is how now the progesteron is dominant and progesteron picks up in spite of so many fights right days are passing right it is day 12 day 13 day 14 ovulation occurred right day 15 but now that oocyte it tells that see i can't survive more right and that window is getting closed so that fertilization span is getting closed and it is like day 16 has arrived and still nothing has happened so in that case now the ovaries would say that see that corpus luteum right he was working he was working hard now you are telling don't work don't work fine so now it is called as the no, we can't draw it with now it is called as the corpus albicans albicans it is white it is non-functional it is non-functional so now there is no luteinizing hormone there is no follicle stimulating hormone right when this occurs so immediately when the fertilization span has closed so even the cervix right would say now there is no one to be welcomed so that mucus that becomes thick that thickens right due to all these things say when when this corpus luteum has stopped working now there is no theca there is no granulosa so the final effect is what estrogen already been stopped and this progesterone right who was fighting so much even there is no progesterone lack of all these things so then that endometrium would say okay, if you guys are not there so what would i do endometrium breaks right it breaks it shrinks so all those blood vessels which were prepared right they break and that's where that menstruation starts right it is where all the prepared structures they are broken and they are shed out right and that's the day one that's considered as day one of next cycle right and then once again the whole process it keeps on getting repeated so you can see friends that how how beautifully orchestrated system is now when you see realize that say it is the estrogen which is one of the finest mood handler right so when that wave goes up and down up and down yes it is in fact there are they say that yes you are females so sometimes their moods are so good sometimes their moods are so bad but well gentlemen it is because of this cycle right such major changes they do not occur in case of testosterone though it has so many experiments have been done that some changes they do occur but again they are never as aggressive as absolute peak of estrogen to absolute down or the dip <laughs> okay now see when we talk about some pathologies right some pathologies ovarian cyst very common right ovarian cyst it is a very common and and you can diagnose it very effectively by ultrasound in fact it is the investigation of choice in case of say ovarian cyst c ovary carcinoma of ovary that is pretty common right then endometrial cysts 
right? endometrial cysts they are very common so nowadays usg or ct scan right they can give you the complete idea very effectively but in any case for female pathologies ultrasound is very important as it gives you quite an early early diagnosis right? huh, regarding regarding that question that why in some females there are cramps right or the, or it is so painful it usually occurs in young age but as the age increases right the entire system because see it is it is like a heavy burden on the on the entire body right so it's not so that there is only a blood loss but along with that so many electrolytes right they are also getting lost so yes it happens that due to say disruption in the electrolyte balance that may lead to cramps right second as i said the major changes into the estrogen and the progesterone level so on that saturday we'll be discussing something more about it it's like in in very very few sentences if i say that when when i give the name of that topic is that responsibility as a male how a male should really know whether whether his female is really happy or or actually not right female would be giving several signals but it is an entirely different language and it, unless and until you don't understand that language so it, it that entire act becomes a complete selfish act right so that's where even these cramps right those cramps they they do give some of the very important indication right so we'll discuss about it on saturday so next topic now this is this will go really fast right this is the uterine tubes or the fallopian tubes or the fallopian tubes also called as the salpings that's why histrosalpingography right so histro that means uterus salpings means these fallopian tubes graphy means to watch that is one of the procedure and we'll watch one image in which the dye is injected and that dye goes all the way from uterus to fallopian tubes and if the dye gets spilled into the peritoneal cavity then it is said okay fine those fallopian tubes are patent right we'll see that so uterine tubes or fallopian tubes or salpings or salpings right they all mean the same what we see over here is two major things one this is meso salpings that is the mesentery that is the mesentery for the fallopian tubes right as we said this would be the usual site for fertilization that would be the usual site so that's the uterine tube and we said that this is the ovarian artery in infundibulo pelvic ligament infundibulo pelvic ligament it is same that suspensory ligament of ovary right so we just write suspensory ligament of ovary then the fimbrial and that's right ovary and ligament of ovaries yes this is that sida sada ligament right broad ligament see the name itself right it is so broad and that is the mesometrium into that that uterine artery uterine artery which is the branch of that entire trunk of internal iliac right it goes over there here is the meeting point they both meet over here and that is the ovarian artery ovarian artery which was coming all the way from the abdominal aorta right just underneath that renal and then that's the ureter external loss and regarding this vagina cervix all those things will be discussed tomorrow right right from the body of uterus to cavity everything that would be this portion will will cover tomorrow okay
The broad ligament of uterus, right, in its free upper margin is, we can really see that that's the upper margin, right, that's, that would be the upper margin. That's where the location of this uterine tube is there, right, that uterine tube. Now see, we need to understand, so let's draw this, right. So on one side, if we draw, that's the uterus, right? And the these are the that's the uterine tube. Now some portion it goes inside and it opens. So this is what is called as the uterine ostium, right? Ostium is opening. Uterine ostium. So that's first. Then this portion which is into the wall of uterus that is called as the intramural right so this would be intramural so that's the second part then the isthmus isthmus is like a joint right it's like a joint so this isthmus this is third this is like a narrow cord like structure right this is a narrow cord like structure then comes the ampulla this one that is ampulla this one is not third it would be fourth right because we are starting with that ostium so usually fertilization would be occurring over here this is pretty thin walled right it is thin walled dilated and it is tortuous you must have seen right here we have drawn in straight but as such it is quite tortuous tortuous then there is infundibulum in fundibulum right so this is like fifth and then comes the last one over here it is the fimbrial end fimbria means finger like projections right it is like finger like projections so that's the fimbrial end that's how the whole thing is is arranged and yes you know that thing right that's where the ovary this would be that sida sada ligament and this one would be that suspensory ligament right suspensory ligament all right going up and see this one apophoron right apophoron See, it is quite near to the ovaries and the fallopian tubes. Epophoron, right? What exactly this epophoron is? Right? Epophoron, right? Second O is for that resonance. Okay, this is also called as par ovarium, right? It is also called as the par ovarium. It is remnant of mesonephric duct. Now, you remember we talked about mesonephric duct, right? What mesonephric duct was? That is that that you which was leading to drain that primitive kidney, right? And from that primitive kidney it was draining into the cloaca right say just remember it say this was the mouth from where it was the baby was drinking that amniotic fluid and then this was the cloaca right and those primitive kidneys they are formed by mesonephric duct right and then releasing into the cloaca once again going into the amniotic circulation right so this apophoron is a remnant 
of mesonephric duct. Now see, in viva, if such questions occur, then you should be very happy. Because that means ki you have already crossed the, some of the basic questions and you are at a good level now. Right? So that's the reason that it is good if, if such questions they come. Okay. And now we talk about the blood supply. And this blood supply is extremely easy. Just draw this. This is a full fallopian tube. This is medial two-third and this one is lateral one-third. Lateral one-third that is where the ovaries would be there and ovaries they are supplied by ovarian artery. So ovarian artery has got good heart so it will say yes my primary function is to supply ovaries but I don't mind this lateral one-third is near so it supplies that also. Right? While over here no doubt about it, uterine artery is the big boss, so it supplies medial two-third and yes, they both would like to meet at a point, right, so they do anastomose. So in case if there is anything wrong to one of the artery, no problem, second one would take over, right. Okay, regarding the veins, in veins, we said do remember that pempiniform plexus, right? Pempiniform plexus. Pempiniform plexus, which was like a joint effort from renal, hypogastric, right? All of them, and it was giving sympathetic and parasympathetic pus. So everything remains same. Same as ovaries in case of, uh, I'm sorry, in case of veins. And even in nerves also, it will come like that. Regarding the lymphatics, right? Regarding the lymphatics. This is isthmus, right? Ampulla. This entire portion this entire portion, ampulla and beyond, it will go to lateral aortic and paraortic lymph nodes. Same as ovaries, right? Only this isthmus part, right? That will go something where the uterus will be going. So that is superficial inguinal nodes. Guinal nodes, right? And now we talk about the nerve supply. Oh, it has become a marathon session. So I just mixed up something, right? Sympathetic, parasympathetic, that is all over here. I don't know how I mixed it up in that venous system. Sorry. So, sympathetic and parasympathetic, same style, right? In sympathetic, yes, it is that hypogastric plexus, right? T10, T10 to L2, right? And from that hypogastric plexus, what it was doing? right in hypogastric plexus it was afferent efferent afferent was pain efferent was right this was afferent afferent was carrying that pain efferent efferent that was vasomotor now you know vasomotor so well it leads to vasoconstriction right vasoconstriction and what parasympathetic will be doing here it would be slightly changed. Divide it into lateral half and the medial half. Right? It's a long tube. It's a long tube. 
So, little half that is by Vegas. No doubt, they will be doing both of them, they will be doing the same function vasodilatation, right? But the medial half that is by pelvic splanchnic nerves, right? That is by pelvic splanchnic nerves. So, that's where things change slightly. And yes, they will be doing just the ulta of sympathetic, that is vasodilation. Some of the clinical things, very common is salpingitis. Wherever the itis words comes, right, salpingitis. Whenever this itis comes, that means it is inflammation. Correct? That is inflammation of uterine tubes. Right? Regarding the sterility test. Sterility test. That is, is the tube blocked? Right? Because if the tube is blocked, it won't allow that ovum to travel or it won't allow the sperms to travel. So this is for tubal blockage. Right? That's for tubal blockage. And in this, histrosalpingography can be done. But there is one more test. Now this is a very subjective test. Right? Subjective means it it's like there is no proof that person who is performing that test he is hearing so what he does is that this is also called as the rubin's test right rubin's test or it is called as the insufflation test insufflation test now in this insufflation test air is pushed into the uterus right so that's the uterus when the air is pushed, that air would actually travel, right, from this side or both sides. It will travel, it will come out of that fimbrial end and that fimbrial end, if it comes out, that's where if you auscultate, right, if you auscultate, right, with the stethoscope, you'll be hearing the bubbling sound bubbling sound because that's where the air is coming out right this is in iliac fossa so in iliac fossa if you hear bubbling sound so then this is okay that means the tubes are patent but this is a very subjective test right okay the actual good one is this this is called as the hystero Salpingo, salpingography, right? So this is the contrast media, right? That's the contrast medium which has been inserted. That's the uterus, right? It goes on both sides, right? And then it spills into the peritoneal cavity and that's how it is done. This is surely a radio opaque dye, right? It's a radio opaque dye which is used. Now, see, till this point, everything was good, right? But sometimes it happens that fine that sperm has also traveled to this distance to fertilize it it's fertilized but then it is embedded here only and when the fertilized egg right it is embedded in tube so this is what is called as the tubal pregnancy and it is very dangerous two reasons there is no space and this area is very thin so it can rupture right tubal pregnancy definitely it leads to tubal rupture and in that case it becomes emergency so if tubal tubal pregnancy is detected 
right it, it has to be terminated because this is dangerous right so this is one point which we need to talk about the second point that ovum which was transporting right the ovum which was moving that was because by muscular contraction right muscular contraction it is exactly like those peristaltic wave right it is like that peristaltic wave and it said that this is under the control of hormones so it is under the control of hormone it really happens this is laparoscopic sterilization right so just a small incision and the laparoscope is inserted laparoscopic sterilization and it happens like say that's the tube right that's let's say this is the uterine tube so this uterine tube is caught right and and like this right and like this and a ring is inserted so that now the ohm won't, won't transfer won't travel and later on it leads to those additions so practically this this space is blocked or it can be done in the form of this this is what is called as the surgical sterilization right just no explanation is needed right it is called as the surgical sterilization where the tube itself is cut right this these ends are tied and it's cut so no scope right so that's it for today So thank you so much and tomorrow we'll be taking the second part of female reproductive organs part 2 right thank you and good night and see you tomorrow bye bye yes i am putting this file into our shared folder <laughs>